what did you learn at school about basalt? I was taught it was once lava, there's lots of it, and it's used to make roads. Simon Murcott, Laurel's National Technical Manager, says common old basalt is critical to modern life. It's a fabulous material to extract aggregates for concrete, asphalt, to build roads, schools, houses, hospitals, you name it. At the company's basalt quarry near Harvey Bay in Queensland, rock is crushed to different sizes. But demand for the dust and the finest gravel is low. Fines can be up to 40%, depending on the different quarry and the different resource. Yes, so it's an issue. We certainly would appreciate having an extra offtake opportunity that makes a lot of environmental and sustainable sense. Basalt's a problem for most open-cut miners. Often it sits on top of valuable mineral deposits. Called overburden, it's moved aside and left. Those stockpiles look like 10 metres high, 100 metres wide and a kilometre long. They're, they're sort of big, big land formations. Convinced overburden could be monetised, Andrew Pedley and mate James Lyons quit their mining jobs to launch Carbonaut. Their start-up aims to increase basalt's value by crushing it and spreading it on farms. They were convinced farmers would pay for their advice because as basalt erodes, it releases minerals useful as fertiliser. But Andrew says the big unlock was that as basalt breaks down, a process called enhanced rock weathering occurs, removing CO2 from the air permanently. And we thought with the combination of the fertiliser and the carbon removal permanent lockup and the ability to basically move it a couple of hundred yards down the road onto farmland, we thought it was a really compelling case. His timing was spot on as trapping atmospheric CO2 and locking it up in soil is attracting business, government and scientific attention around the world. Soil scientist Paul Nelson says in the last five years, enhanced rock weathering has become the majority of his work at James Cook University in Cairns. It's been happening for millions of years and it happens really slowly. And so what we're doing with enhanced rock weathering is to speed up the process. Concretions are quite distinct all the way through, so that tells us it's pretty weathered. He's treated these plots with different rates of crushed basalt. Some's on, some's in the soil. There's just a little bit we can see on the surface, but there's more of it that's actually been, you know, mixed in. When the rock's breaking down, it has a liming effect which neutralises the acidity in the soil and it also releases nutrients. So potentially you can get a benefit, not just carbon dioxide capture, but also in increased soil health and plant growth. That alkalising impact on soil could counter the acidification of oceans too, as when some of the bicarbonate dissolves, it leaches into groundwater and ends up in the sea. Good news for farmers in the Great Barrier Reef catchment areas. Paul Nelson and PhD student Fred Holden's focus, though, is on land. My PhD topic is specifically looking at the way we can manipulate pH and soil atmospheric CO2 and seeing how those things, when they change in the soil profile, how that affects the um, effectiveness of enhanced weathering. Main aim of enhanced weathering is a carbon dioxide removal technology, so it's a negative emissions technology in our efforts to combat climate change. We're looking for warm, wet conditions typically because that's where the greatest chemical weathering is going to occur and that's sort of a big part of the enhanced weathering process. Our soils are naturally really highly weathered and infertile in Australia, but what we're doing by adding this crushed basalt is we're making the soils as though they were younger and better. Basalt isn't a total fertiliser replacement, but it can supply some of what farmers need. The crushed rock doesn't supply nitrogen, but by making the soil healthier, you can have a higher nitrogen use efficiency, basically, so the idea is that you'd be able to add less and have more go into the crop. The application of the crushed rock will add nutrients such as magnesium, silicon, and it'll actually let slowly lift the pH over time. And in a tropical region like this, we often have acidic soils, so that's also another co-benefit for farmers. 
If an industry does develop, Paul says application rates and measurement methods proving how much CO2 is captured will be critical. The JCU work is in conjunction with startups Carbonaut and UK based Undo Carbon. The startups have been funded on the hope that it will capture carbon, but we need to know how much carbon is captured, and so they need a monitoring, reporting, and verification methodology to do that. A field trial that we've been running for five years in Australia, that's one of the first in the world, so nobody had done it before. So we had to work out how do we actually measure carbon capture, and it's pretty tricky, and it took us a few years to work it out. This is the first time we're using these in this trial, so we haven't been doing it regularly since last wet season. So. The next phase of research will see Paul and Fred work with the University of South Australia and North Queensland's Drought Hub. Well then. Michael Russo's family farms macadamias and cane at Childers, 300 kilometres north of Brisbane. Carbonaut has been running a trial here for three years. He didn't miss this time, did he? Good coverage. No, good coverage. Michael's keen to see if basalt can improve soil health and cut costs. Did you think if this worked, people would have done it? Yeah, yeah, well, it just looks like cracker dust and people use it on roads and in their backyards to put pavers down and things like that. So it's just one of those products that's so readily available. And you think, oh, well, is it too good to be true? This state-of-the-art packing shed shows just how serious the family is about its future in macadamias. They export, so reducing their carbon footprint was on the radar when Andrew called. We're unsure about what the best path was. So when Andrew came and started talking about this type of product, it really you know, twigged my ears saying, hang, hang on, there might be something here to, to further investigate. Basalt has been applied at varying rates for three years on this plot. A good result is if soil tests show the rock is weathering. If you don't get that breakdown, you don't get to play. So we've been able to prove that beyond doubt, which is great. So we're looking for things like phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, all these minerals our farmers are paying for that are being dug up in countries overseas and shipped all the way over to Australia and fragile supply lines that are sitting in rock dumps just down the road. We really want to see how much of that's got into the soil over sort of 18 months, 36 month time frames. Michael thinks his soil is better, but won't do his fertiliser budget until the latest results are in. He's hoping he can cut it by a third. And if we can do that, we can become more sustainable. We can ride out the wave of the prices going up and down with our economy, it being macadamias or sugar. It just gives us the ability to stay in longer and be much more competitive. Encouraged by Carbonaut's trial, Michael started his own bigger one on these trees two years ago. He suspects spreading basalt will be an annual job, especially as inquiries for low-carbon cane came from Japan last year. We've had some great success already talking to some of the Japanese buyers and really wanting to understand this further and wanting to take some sugar that we've already had some basalt down on. Where the next five years could be, you know, hopefully we're spreading basalt across all of our country, all of our macadamias and all of our cane land and really starting to generate um, some great returns for um, soil nutrients and soil health, plus the ability of carbon capture. At between $10 and $30 a tonne, this basalt from nearby Harvey Bay was cheap, as was the delivery charge. Andrew Pedley predicts that will be the norm. We've modelled over 15 million hectares within 50 kilometres of an actively mined viable rock source. And it's cheaper than buying superphosphate and importing it and shipping it across the world and putting in a truck and trucking it across Australia. Carbonaut's running trials in three states and the US. A new government grant will see it expand into cotton and grain here in Australia. Andrew Pedley's confident interests will grow as importing countries begin to penalise Australian producers for not being carbon neutral by 2030. 
In the meantime, key fertiliser producing nations are facing unrest and there's uncertainty about tariffs and trade restrictions. It's a really good time to have a solid, stable fertiliser and carbon play for both food production but also market access. 